Yeah, it's done well here. We focus on this. It's done well here. Guys, let's check out this house um, of the agency owner who manages all the houses. He's just bought this house now. I'm going to congratulate him and uh, celebrate his success. Let's get it. Yo, congrats bro. Cheers man. There you go. Oh, little, 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 little half present. There you oh, go. That's fucking sick. Keep that man. You are some weird. First million pound house. Well, it's not the last one, is it? So it's got to keep going. There keep you going go. More. Are you going to show us the full? <laughs> Come on, mate. Let's Come on, let's go. Might let's go, let's get it. Something outside your new acquisition. How, how are you feeling right now? Uh, feeling pretty, just, just normal, mate. I feel uh, it's a nice, nice thing for my mother and father. Uh, they always backed me from day one. I was the easiest child growing up. Uh, made lots of mistakes in my twenties, so it's nice to give back to them. And yes, yeah, nice day. It's a nice day, and uh, but you know, it's the beginning of doing a lot more. Guys, this guy's got 30 plus HMOs all over Salford. This is his first million pound house. Hard work pays off, and uh, just want to say all the best to Sunny Girl and. Thank you for all your support and your hard work in regards to property management. This guy's the best property manager you'll find if you've got a portfolio or your portfolio landlord. He really does know his stuff and obviously this is testament to that. I met this guy because he was buying one of my houses. He was taking ages. I went on Instagram. I seen him on Instagram <laughs> posing with his muscles out. I was thinking, this guy's not buying my house. <laughs> Turned up, met him. Turned out he owns like the other half of the, the roads that I own. And then, uh, yeah, we've worked closely ever since and it just proves that you've always got to be networking, you've always got to trust your gut instinct. And I ended up giving him my whole portfolio to manage and he's uh, basically looked after my houses like he's, they're his own. So, um, hard work pays off and, uh, lad, just want more for you, bro. <laughs> well, it's interesting, um, I actually saw Niven on uh, TV before I even met him. So when, uh, when he followed me and sent me a message, I thought, I thought it was a fake account at first. So, uh, and I think, you know, there's a, there's a perception, what you see on TV, and then there's actual real life as well. And, uh, yeah, he's actually one of my best mates, and, uh, yeah, he's really good guy. Uh, yeah, we're really close, and we're looking forward to uh, doing more things together going forward. So come follow me. I'm literally going to go for the garage. I only just got the keys like two hours ago. This is the latest acquisition that I've ever done in my life. 20 bed HMO coming to Cheshire, <laughs> watch out. Each room you always get planning permission as well. <laughs> but guys, look at the best bit of this house. Go on, bro. So I think, look, one of the key selling features here, one of the nice things for mum and dad was not just to move to Cheshire, not just for me to give back to them, but something for them to be relaxing. So follow me. Got this really cool fucking pool. Now, it's a little bit dated at first, but I think there's a saying that people say, you don't want to buy the best house in the shittest area, you want to buy, well, the shittest house in the best area. This house has amazing potential. Um, but as far as well, get like personal trainers that come to your house and they do like water aerobics and stuff like that for my mum. So yeah, just gotta keep an eye on the old man when he's had a few drinks so he doesn't fall in there. So apart from that, gotta keep it cool man. And uh, I think it's fair to say that like, somebody's bought his house and you can just tell his you can just tell his business acumen here because he's already knows a pound per square meter and his renovation plans for his property. So it's not just a case of Oh, I want a piece of pool, I want to buy it. It's actually really switched on, and I think that applies to the very first houses he's uh, purchased up to a million pound houses. And basically, the same principles apply. So, um, I think that it's always a business case as to buying houses and whether you start at the your lower end of the scale of your 80. What was the first property you bought? Probably 80,000? Yeah, it would have been back in Grimsby. 50, 60,000 60, up to a million pounds and you scale that in a number of years and it's possible through property and this can show you what hard work can bring so um, up to you so they show us, show us the house. Yeah, so it's been a pretty cool journey, I mean not like me saying that's it, I'm done, uh, I mean 
in 2017, I had three properties, now I've got 37. Uh, this is number 37 today. So I'm going to walk around, have a look at the house. Now we can see like what's, what's really the vision of, of what we're trying to achieve here. You can see the kitchen's a little bit dated. Um, obviously want to do a full refurb throughout the whole house. Again, if you look around, it's, you know, it's a bit of typical like 90 sort of spec, but you know, the value add is there. If we can get planning permission to add a bit of square meterage, then we can really, really feel the value add from that. I think it's really good guys because I look all the time for property and I've never seen a house this size for the price, uh, for the purchase price and with a, with a pool. So I think you've done really well. Obviously looking at the aspect of the house as well, you can see where you can add value and it's got the size um, plot and basically the layout for somebody to really add value to this house. And then he's got multiple options, whether he wants to sell it at a profit or just keep it, remortgage it and get on to the next one. But so cracking buy-in, obviously, um, I think you've applied the same kind of um, business ethos, whether you're buying for your personal or for your business, and it really shows in this house, and I think you've got a bargain, to be fair. So, uh, obviously, relatively speaking, it's still a very expensive house, but what I mean by that is, um, by the time you've added value, this could be a 1.5, 1.6 million pound property. Yeah, and I think I think it's all relative, right? I think when you're buying places in you know, Cheshire, Wilms, Love, Wilms, Edge, that kind of area, are you getting value for your money, right? So obviously, if you compare Wilms, Love to like, you know, the outer parts of Wales or Scotland, you're not getting the same, but you're paying for the location, right? So this is where the value add comes in. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. We've got a five year fixed mortgage on it. So whether I do the uh, ambitious work straight away, I'm still going to mess about with it. But, um, but it's, it's, it's a nice option to have, right? And I think there was an American uh, investor, a guy called uh, Brandon Davies, he made a point about he never loses money in a property investment deal. Why? Because he's got three main rules. Do you A, know the area? Do you B, ensure that it cash flows? And C, can you add value? So area, cash flow, adding value. I've implemented all those three rules going forward for every single HMO renovation that I've done. So I haven't lost money on any of them. And my worst deal ended up making 20, 25%. Best deal was about 88%. So again, it's that same philosophy going forward, right? Area, cash flow, and adding value. And not having those three as rules, you just simply can't go wrong, and it just sets like a benchmark going forward. So yeah, anyway, so follow me around the house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show us this house, Sonny. Right. This so team never misses, like you were saying. You've not <laughs> lost one bit of money on a house. I think you've made money on every house so far. And funny, funny enough, you bought one of my houses where I made 70,000, but you can't <laughs> penalize profit, yeah? So even though I made money, you probably made money. I think it's gone up anyway. It's gone up. Right? It's gone up yeah. And you can make money together. It's not one person makes, one person loses out. It's a team and everyone's got to make money to keep everyone happy. And if the whole team's winning, then you get in houses like this and you're moving on to the next one. Everyone's happy for each other. So. Show us the house, bro. Okay, so I've got my eyes where I want to put my podcast studio. So it's definitely going to go in this house. I think it's going to go over it. This is what I'm thinking. I mean, the ceiling's a little bit low, but I think I can work with it. I think prior to us purchasing, I think there was like a table tennis table here, but I think definitely this room has the potential for that once we get the acoustics right, the lighting right. I want to say the lighting, all we do is just black out that and then we get our own little box lights and everything like that. What is this, man? So, um, as you can see down there, it's illegal storage. So, uh, yeah, I can uh, put all my uh, dodgy illegal activities Don't even ask me well. what I'm going to use that yeah. for. Have a look, don't go straight in. Step into the master room here. This is my mother and father's room. Um, you can see it's pretty nice in terms of like, but it's massive. Uh, sliding doors which obviously overlook the garden which then overlooks a field. I'm actually part of a trustee formation or part of a trust. I'm one of the members of a trust that owns that field. We can't ever sell it, can't ever make money on it but what that trust does it stops developers, horrible developers, coming in and then potentially doing a massive development behind our house. That's interesting so basically is that part of is that part of buying this property then that you become a member of the trust? That's exactly what it is. Let's, uh, let's follow Sonny I think he's got his staff on hand today as well. Nice pink carpet as well. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the female guests. Yeah, well, it's not mother and father's bathroom, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, if you order Tony Soprano on Wish, you just get a guy just sat there. So, I think that's a problem for another time doing my cigar, right? <laughs> <laughs> we need a picture of you with them, with your jacuzzi on. <laughs> it's basically like an office. I think if you really. 
I think the key, thing, the key thing here is that you could transform this house literally like six. You, what's that show? Uh, changing rooms, basically changing all the carpet, the doors, and the paint scheme, and you'd and we'll probably come back if you want, and we'll see it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it'll be a big job at all just to get it just before you start renovating it. Probably stage one, you'd do that. Yeah, and then I think as I described to you before, there's there's phase one and there's phase two. Phase one is to make it livable, should we say, which is literally the floors, walls, ceilings, and doors. Uh, change the flooring. You know, repaint the walls, pull off the wallpaper, repaint the walls, replaster it, and then um, sort out some doors as well. You want to start like opening up these walls and just completely re-engineer the whole house, really. Um. I'd live in it now. Wouldn't you guys? Drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and let us know if you'd actually live in here from day one. I'm sure everyone would. And uh, let us know what's first when you do, because if it was me, I'd be jumping in that pool already. If you just follow us here, yeah, so I actually forgot there was even a bathroom here. If I'm honest, I didn't really know too much about this house. I knew that I wanted it, and then we just put an offer in and I bought it. That sounds pretty arrogant, but I knew my mum and dad wanted it, and I was like, right, let's just put some efforts in, try and get it. And I think one of my rules in life is don't get too overexcited about things you can't control. So this house took a stupid amount of time, not because of any people doing anything bad. It was a probate, and the thing with probate, it's basically you're buying off a dead person. And HMRC want to liquidate their assets, make sure they get everything that they're owned before the asset is released to the family or the funds of the assets. That is a long, laborious process with no timelines, no feedback, no communication. And at some points you wonder whether it's going to happen. So for me, I just parked at the back of my head. So now that it's happened today, I'm a bit like, oh shit, I forgot there's a bathroom here, I forgot there's bathrooms over there. Is it like seeing it again for the first time? Yeah, it is, really. But well, now you own it, that must be a weird feeling. No, you've done well, it's a nice, nice property. Again, we've got more storage in the eaves there. Um, let's check it out, basically. Old houses have got loads of storage yeah. in there, don't they? Loads of built-in wardrobe. I think they were in the fashion back in there. Well, the, the HMO developer in me says uh, do a proper dormer conversion on that and chuck another room. Over the garage, street. is that over the garage, is it? Yeah, yeah over the garage, yeah. So really, when we count the rooms, we've got like, essentially one study, but one, two, three, four, five. That's where the podcast studio is going to be. It's basically, my bedroom is going to be a podcast studio whenever I stay here. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm pretty ubiquitous, pretty much everywhere. Uh, I mean, in a respectful way, but like, uh, you know, one minute I'm in Canada, next minute I'm in Colombia, one minute I'm in Dubai. So I'm only in this country for like three to six months of the year, and then when I am here, I just stay in different parts of the country, shall we say. And uh, so when I am in Manchester, the Cheshire region, then I'll stay here with mum and dad whenever I need to. But, um, but yeah, no, it's an exciting day, and it's a day that, you know, once we've got everything sorted with the unpacking, then I think we can just sit and just, just enjoy it, really. And I think for mum and dad, it's just a, it's a nice thing for them to see return on their investment on their son, uh, giving back to them. So I think that's pretty cool. You, uh, can you confidently say to somebody who's looking to buy the first property that they could uh, picture themselves in a house like this? And did you picture yourself in a house like this when you first started on your journey buying your first uh, probably shitty HMO in Salford like mine? I'd say I probably did visualise it and I always reverse engineer my targets. When I first moved to Manchester, I wanted to move to Salford Keys. I always used to look online and think, right, I want to live there. Then I was like, I want to live in Deansgate Square. Then I'm like, I want to go to Canada. Then I want to, I always reverse engineer my targets. So for me, it always felt like a natural progression ending up somewhere like here. And the irony is that even after when we exchanged the other day, when I was driving around, I was looking at the super mansions that are worth like three, four million. I'll tell you, I think I told you about yeah, this. Yeah, you told yeah. me on the phone, didn't you? And then you literally that day, I went back home and I started calculating how many HMOs do I need at £1,400 per month net for me to get a million, for me to get a million, for me to get a mortgage of £3 million. So basically, that's £3 million divided by 4.5. And then from there, you divide it by 12 months and then £1,400 per month. And I worked out I need another, um, I think, 30-odd HMOs, so averaging about another five a year in the next five years. Then I can get a £4 million house at a £3 million mortgage. So for me to do that, compared to what I've done so far, that's actually a smaller gap. But for me, it's not just about the big house and the validity from that. I just want to just, just enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, keep traveling. And for me, enable other people to leave their jobs, not just about me trying to get that super duper house. For me, I'd rather just keep the same house, but enable 10, 20, 30 people around me to quit their jobs. For me, that'll give me more validity than me just getting a super mansion when I've, when I've enabled nobody to leave their jobs. So that's what I'm about. Good, good, good advice there from Sonny. And I think a key thing as well about property is, so you're talking about getting a super mansion. Don't forget, you would have another thirty. Did you say thirty? So you'd have another thirty HMOs, yeah. and then you'd have a super mansion. So you would actually have 
that's quite a big that's quite a big um, jump because you'd have thirty houses backing you up as well. It's not just a case of increasing your income; you'd actually increase your assets as well. Absolutely. So Absolutely. you'd have a four million pound house, but you'd also have probably four million pounds of houses as well. So it's eight million pound. If yeah. you know what I mean, because yeah, the 30 yeah. houses would be worth that. And that's a beautiful thing about property. Not only do you get your cash flow to afford places like this and to pay for a lifestyle, but you also get the assets behind it. So if any day you wanted to sell 30 houses, you could, and you'd still have your four million pound house. Yeah, I, I think and, and that, that is an excellent point. And I think privately I do talk about that more than publicly, but for me, I, I can't really control the economy. I can't control capital growth. But when you look at historic data, you cannot ignore capital growth. You simply cannot ignore it. And like, you know, I've, I've been on the compound interest calculators over the next 25 years and this and that. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty healthy amount over the next 25 years, even at conservative numbers of 4%. So I advise anybody that's looking at this now to go to a compound interest calculator, look at what they can afford to put away, and then have a look at it over the next 20 years. So if you've only got five grand, have a look at putting 200 pound a month away for 25 years. Say if you're 20 years old now, right, put five grand away, putting 200, 300 quid a month away for the next 20, 30 years and then have a look on the compound interest calculator. You have a few hundred grand. So it's just about chopping away, chopping away, like chopping down a tree. And it ain't about get rich quick. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's get rich slow. That's, well, what, that's well, what this game's about. But once you got rich, I think uh, it's best to say you'll enjoy a nice lifestyle like you are. Yeah, it's decent, but uh, we can do more, a lot more. Thanks, guys. And... Uh, Remember, follow me at nivonsamchetty.com, at Niv Online, Sonny Gill and UBI Holdings. It's been a pleasure today. And uh, live from Cheshire, the new Cheshire resident. Lock up your daughters. Sonny's in town. Let's get it. Cheshire cat, mate. <laughs>